Hi, hi, NCR. How are you? Uh, you can hear me, right? So, uh, good afternoon, guys. I mean, I'm uh, hoping to show you a small something of a magic show. So, hopefully, you'll enjoy the show, right? Uh, so, here, yeah, I mean, that's what. Uh, thanks for the intro, Tanvi. Uh, so, here, I mean, I'm, my name is Shashank. Uh, so, I am now founder of this new company called One Human AI. So, I was also I also founded this company called Cure.ai uh, in 2016, which is the world's most adopted healthcare AI. I'm going to talk a bit more about that. And I also co-authored PyTorch. How many AI doves here? I mean, so I know my audience. Okay, I, two guys. Okay, so like, PyTorch is the most used framework by everyone, like including OpenAI that is used to develop AI models. Like I wrote that, half some of it along with the other folks. You know, don't think that you know cool stuff cannot happen uh, without if you are in India or something. Uh, I just want to make that a point that you can do really cool stuff sitting in India and. There's nothing like Cure.ai in the valley either. Uh, so we pretty much killed all the valley guys who did the same stuff, AI and radiology, right? So, so don't underestimate, don't underestimate what you can do in India, from India, for the world, for India, right? So, uh, so I'm going to talk a bit more about Cure now. So we are the world's most adopted healthcare AI, not just in India, but across the world. We are deployed around the world uh, in like 50 countries. Uh, we process 50,000 patients every single day, right? And this is healthcare. The privacy regulations are immense. The proof of burden is immense. And we still have to uh, make all of that stuff work. So how did we do that? You know, our customers are super scared about their uh, the data, right? You don't want, so just today Slack announced that uh, they're going to try an AI on your data. Like how many of Slack users here? Please, please opt out. You have to drop a mail uh, to opt out. Otherwise, they are going to try your clone. So, so the, so it's very important. I mean, nobody wants the same thing to happen on your personal healthcare data, is there? So we had to worry very much about data privacy and regulations and sovereignty, right? And we still deployed around the world. We deployed in Mount Everest. We deployed in Nigeria, we deployed in Assam, we deployed in UK and US. How did we do that? We actually shipped, to, shipped compute to our customers, right? What you see on the right, uh, that's the, uh, that's the uh, AI server that we shipped to our customers, right? So we could not bring cloud to the, we could not bring customers to the cloud because they are healthcare people, they don't want to move to cloud. So we brought cloud to them. So we sachetized AI, into small boxes so that you can personalize them and take away with you to wherever you want, right? And ship them to uh, Rwanda, ship them to Philippines, ship them to Vietnam. So we figured that, right? So we shipped compute. And this has been a paradigm changing thing in how we scale startups and how we scale uh, compute, right? So, so today I'm looking to uh, make this available to uh, all the folks, all the industries, right? So, so cue the, so here's the, here's the thing, I'm not, I just want to show you this because like there's no fancy power involved, this is like your home plug, I'm running this on a stage, and here's my server, and I'm going to turn it on. It runs on your, it runs on a freaking stage, right, it's super plug and play, it's easy to use. And it has very, very small footprint, as you can see. I mean, it's a small machine. You can keep this under your desk. You don't require any complicated infrastructure to run this, right? And it's, uh, uh, as Tanvi said, it, it's what I call as a cloud in a box, right? And you can access this remotely as well. And uh, this is free as in freedom, right? You are free to use it. You are free to move data away from it. You are free to move data into it. No ingress cost, no egress cost. And it costs 2 lakhs plus GST, very reasonable, affordable by most folks, most startups trying to do something cool, right? So how does it work? It comes with what I call as personal AI OS. So again, those will understand this. We don't use, we don't use Windows guys, uh, like really, we use Linux. We all, we all love and use Linux. So my OS is going to be based on Linux. How many of you folks heard Ubuntu? Okay, wow. yes, that's awesome. Uh, so my system is going to be based on Ubuntu, uh, not Windows. So in home-built, homebrew OS. 
right? It comes with uh, metrics, which is uh, an open source alternative to WhatsApp, Slack, and whatnot, so that you don't have to give data away of your organization to anyone, right? And it comes with uh, ERP Next. Uh, ERP Next, by the way, people who don't know, is an amazing SAP competitor built out of Bangalore. Uh, it's being power, it's powering like a lot of manufacturing and a lot of different things uh, uh, here, in, here in India. So it comes built in with it. Uh, it comes built in with uh, one API. So this is an open source and uh, open GPU programming framework that works on all GPUs, not just the GPU that I have in. It works on every single GPU that is out there, right? And on top of the data that is collected in the machine, right, through all these apps, it runs Llama. Right? Again, like how many devs, AI devs here? They should have heard Llama, right? Awesome. Uh, so it runs Llama on the, on the machine, on John Eck. So you don't have to give away your data to anyone. So the AI runs on your machine where the data resides. Right? And so how does it compare to the alternatives? Right? How does it uh, compare to public cloud, which is where most people today run AI? Right? So here's, uh, here's a... Uh, comparison I have uh, drawn up compared to a uh, fairly big public cloud whom I will not name. Uh, so AI is going to be twice, I mean, faster because you don't have to move the data to anywhere. It can work without internet, right? So uh, it's going to be more secure than public cloud because you don't have to move, you don't have to give away your data to anyone. Your data sits with you and you can do whatever you want and no one's going to clone you, right? And finally, it's easier to use, as easy to use as cloud, if not more, right? And the best part, it costs a, fr it, it costs a fraction of what it does on public cloud, right? So how does it work? So let's have a look. So I'm, uh, I'm making a few assumptions here. Uh, so I'm assuming that your startup who's just starting now, and uh, uh, you have, your users are growing as you scale, and you are buying a new server or renting a new server in public cloud every one year, right? Because your users have grown up. So here's the, on the uh, x-axis, I have age of your business represented in months. And on the y-axis, I have server cost that your compute cost you are paying, right? So uh, well, on public cloud, you end up paying nothing on day zero, because like it's an operational expenditure, you pay nothing, you just rent it, right? So, uh, but John Eck, you buy it, you do a capital investment of two lakhs in one single go, so you pay something on day zero. So, but the Within three months, you break even because that's how steep that's how steep public cloud costs are, right? You break even in three months, and within one year, uh, you will have paid uh, to public cloud about eight lakhs. But on while you have only paid two lakhs so far on compute, that's what that's how much how much you have spent, and you have spun up a new server or bought a new server, right? It's gonna the slope of public cloud is gonna increase, and your your costs are gonna grow steep even steeper, right? While it's just a bump, it's just a, it's just a small bump on the, uh, on, the, on the cost, right? By the end of two years, you will have spent 25 lakhs on cloud, uh, on, on public cloud, while you have spent uh, just five lakhs on, on John Eck, right? So this is how uh, it can be super economical. It will cut down the AI cost by 85%. And you don't have to give up your sovereignty. You don't have to give up your data to anyone. You just, you can keep the... AI to you, you can have AI trained on your data, personalized to you, and you don't have to uh, be someone's slave. So that's all, folks. Um, so connect with me on WhatsApp, and uh, there's a small demo. Uh, if, you, if you come to me, I'll show you a small demo running out of this box. And uh, thanks for your time. you back. Uh, Shashank, if you can come back on stage after that cool presentation, I think we, uh, and also Tanvi will join us. We will do a quick Q&A session. Uh, again, thanks a lot for that cool presentation. And now uh, you can field your questions to them. Hi, I'm sorry to be the repetitive face. Uh, Thanks for the mention, Tanvi and Shashank. Uh, kudos on the PyTorch contributions. Mind-blowing. Respect. A quick question on, on, on this lovely hardware demo that you've done here. It's a, it's a, I'll, I'll keep it short, but it's three part, right? It's the entry point, it's the GDPR compliance, and the scalability I want to address with one question. 
your graph was brilliant but uh, you know a vertex ai right i can try llama 3 models on vertex ai and the api endpoints are completely secured so for me to say be a small startup today the entry point for me there is much easier than the upfront capital payment you you've nicely addressed that my question and i i say this uh, with positivity for this technology to scale in india if my entry point is easier and my compliance is already taken care of and when my compute increases my ability to launch new clusters is also a click away how do you see this technology addressing all three got it so uh, the multiple questions in that so i think the the question one of the questions that we had was uh, the regulatory uh, framework right see the biggest part whether it's gdpr whether it's uh, fda whether it's hipa uh, all the like ce right all the different regulations have have had to del deal with it with kyo.ai is the core part of it is that data has to be secure and with the customer right the ownership of the data has to be with the customer that's what the core part of everything is and this clearly i mean you have the ssd here like no, data no one's going to come unless like you keep it on the street and like someone steal your ssd no one's going to take it take it away from you and that makes you very compliant compared to anything else so in healthcare they hated the fact that my patient data is going out of my premises into into some other cloud so we the, the our customers hated it they did not want to do it so we have so we have had to figure this such a solution so this is we figured out this precisely because of those regulatory constraints uh the second question you had was about scaling right so so how do you so this particular box can already handle 100 concurrent uh, llm requests right as of today so concurrent not not constant so today i have about 100 users i just launched like last week it's something called as chat llama i'll show you around uh, so i have got about 100 users so but the active users it can still handle 100 users like you can you can easily scale up a lot of users so second thing uh, with respect to scaling up it's exactly the same process as you do in a cloud you just buy a new box and cluster it you just buy a new box and like cluster it and do a load balancing this is exactly how you do it in a cloud so the ease of use is in fact easier because your developers are used to developing something on their own machine they are, they do it all the time so for them this is this is exactly the same thing they just develop it and they deploy it on the same machine so that gives like a lot of flexibility and comfort for developers and you break even like uh, the pricing is like so so reasonable that you break even in 3 months like if you are afloat for 3 months like you are better off buying this if you are like if you think that you are on a close shop in 3 months then it's like yeah sure go with cloud any other questions folks no i mean no i think he covered it well i think i just also want to add right people plus ai as a not for profit who does a little bit of tech building for some use cases was actually shashank's first customer uh and uh, we are really enjoying it because uh, he gives you the box with the applications configured on it so for us there is no uptime uh, to understand how to use the box right so it comes with all the apis built in so you don't have to do any magic it's like from your point of view you plug and play that's the whole point any other questions folks so okay i'll repeat your question for everyone what's the size of the model installed so right now this uh, i have tested it really well with llama 3 8b so it can run 50 tokens per second uh, which is like way faster than what you find on gpt uh, on open ai uh, it's about gpt 3.5 level model that's running privately so your question is will this create issues as the inference scales correct so the issue you will face no matter whether you are on cloud or on jonic your issue is always going to be about how do i do load balancing right the load balancing tech is simple you use nginx you keep two servers do it it's the same stuff it's exactly you developed on your linux machine right so it's exactly the same thing 
for, for now, yes, I expect the uh, I expect the models to get better and better as as time progresses. I mean, see, three years back, one year back when GPT GPT 3.5 launched, everyone was like, hey, dude, open source not gonna win, and like GPT 3.5 is like super awesome. No one can beat that, and like Zuckerberg just released Llama 3, and it's like it's beating that. I expect the same thing to happen with GPT-4. LLM scaling has peaked, as I call it. Like GPT-4.0 is a smaller model. It's a teacher model. It's like student model from GPT-4. I don't expect. I don't expect the model sizes uh, uh, to become bigger and bigger. It's, they are. Bec they are going to become smaller and smaller. And more importantly, the compute in this is also becoming faster and faster because Moore's law is back. So, like, you, you might be able to use this today. The next version that I'm going to release might have much bigger GPU because Moore's Law is kicking in again. Yeah, please. So, uh, you talked about Llama 3. So, is it that only one large language model can be placed in this? Or you can have multi-large language models? So, LMMs, we can we can uh, infer from this machine, in, from this box, or not? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's completely open source, hackable machine. You get pseudo permissions if you are an admin. You can run, it has a normal GPU in it. You can run any model you want. It can run Gemma, Code Gemma, Code Llama, yeah, Phi 3, you, you name it, man. So the current constraint is by, uh, is the fact that uh, like the RAM, the GPU RAM and this is 16 GB, so that's what limits you. So only so one single GPU in this machine or there are multiple? There's a single GPU in this machine. It's oh. pretty good. I can talk to you later more. I think my time's up. Uh, uh, any questions for Tanvi? Uh, 